So hello my friends, I have been missing on this channel for a little bit because I just had the biggest adventure of my life. But before we jump into these uh, adventure vlogs, I wanted to take a step back and uh, tell you a little bit about the preparation process of the whole hike. So we were out uh, doing a winter through hike of the Kungsleden Trail, the King's Trail, up in north of Sweden. We did it in 60, uh, 26 days, not 65, no, 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 26 days and uh, 460 kilometers long was the trip for us. I did it with two dogs, with a sled and skis. And although, yes, uh, we have a bright green spring here at the moment, I'm in Estonia, by the way. Uh, then up in north of Sweden, the winter was still going strong, many meters of snow, freezing temperatures and so on. So I just came back a little shy of a month ago and I've been letting this experience simmer inside of me a little bit and I think I'm ready to jump into the videos and topics but as I told you I want to share the preparation part of the whole adventure because that was a big big part and as with any adventure like the how do you get to the start line is like half the battle the idea of doing the Kungsleden Trail has been in my mind for years now, ever since I started hiking, because it is uh, written that it, it is one of the most beautiful hikes in the world, and I cannot disagree with that. But having two dogs, sled dogs now, I had the idea to do it in winter time. So I started to prepare the dogs, like to train them. Uh, when we were in Portugal and in Spain, I went to bike riding with them. Of course, I started out slow, five kilometers, seven kilometers, until I built up their endurance up to 15 kilometers. I mostly had to do the do uh, running in the mornings because the temperatures in Spain and Portugal were climbing. It was winter, but they were still climbing quite high in the daytime I really had to take advantage of the early morning chilly hours when I came back to Estonia in February I started uh, training the dogs on the snow uh, we had snow in Estonia but not a lot so I started using the sea ice that we had and we had some uh, very good uh, and proper training sessions in there I used the tire to add weight to myself and to hold of the this uh, pulling process for the dogs because on skis and on sea ice especially it was really slippery slippery and the dogs didn't have a lot of trouble pulling just only me but then there was a big big storm that wrecked the whole sea ice and they didn't have any place to uh, train the dogs anymore I tried to do it uh, on the roads uh, but it was so slippery and I fell so many times with a bike because I didn't have winter tires for my bike. I came out of that experience with many, many blue, blue knees. Many, I have two knees. Many blue spots on my knees. My training, zero. <coughs> because, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I tried to go running a little bit. I tried to do some strength exercises. But at the, at the end I was just... I was hoping that the dogs are pulling me a little bit as well and because they were pulling the sled with the weight I thought I can ski you know like without any weight or back like a like a heavy backpack or a heavy sled behind me I can do it like it doesn't matter uh, at the end I could it was still hard I should have trained myself a little bit to make it a little bit easier for myself but what the hell like this was as it was <laughs> So another big topic is the sled, because in order for me to actually go to the mountains with two pulling dogs successfully and safely, I needed to have a sled, pull sled that had brakes on it, so I could brake when we go downhill and also like brake in general, because when these two dogs go together in front of a, of a sled or a bike, they are like... Pfft they are going so i really needed to, to be extra safe and uh, keep the sled and myself like stable <laughs> when they were crazy pulling so i ha i found this uh, ordinary pulk sled online i ordered it and then i found a sled master in estonia who uh, put additional uh, runners underneath my sled and also the brake uh, system behind the sled. Okay, so here is the sled. The most important thing is the brake. So this should be able to brake the full sled. I can pull it from this rope here 
I can use my hands. This long handle is remo removable from these clips, which was very important to me. So I can actually... Uh, and this whole braking system is removable as well with these clips. So I could take it off and fit it into this box. Uh, I have a small snow anchor. So we are nice and safe. And here I have the attachment for the dogs. Uh, and this is nice and reinforced. And I have small runners that will make the sliding of the sled better because it is raised from the bottom. So now the only thing left to do is to try it out. Yeah, I really needed to like get myself more comfortable behind the sled with the skis and with two dogs. In Pärnu, where I'm from, there was already zero snow, not zero, very little snow. But in the center of Estonia, there were still some snow. So I went there with the sled on the marshland. I, I did like a two or maybe three day like training camp. I have enjoyed our little training camp a lot and the conditions now, it's just like a dance floor at the bog. Overall, the sled has been really nice. The only criticism is that these uh, bolts and nuts are coming open, so I have to put uh, like a bolt uh, glue in there so my brake doesn't break. Other than that, I like it. I will also put uh, holes here so I can attach the load instead of these because these are a little bit in the way uh, on the bottom I would like them to be here the training camp, camp in the marshland was really beneficial for me because when I came back I had some few things that I needed to improve and my stepdad did some final addings to the to the sled uh, having done that the sled was ready and I was ready to go Okay, another peak topic, gear. I had most of my gear already ready from the pre previous years, years, but there were some things that on previous years when I did like Fjallraven and Polar, or when I did this uh, four day hike with Linka up in the mountains, I got to borrow a lot of things. So I needed to buy a shovel, I needed to buy a stove. By the way, I went with Trangia stove, which is really, bulletproof and I loved it a little bit slow but it was it was it was good I liked it uh, very much <laughs> I also bought a ski boot covers because I understood that most of the wetness that comes into the boot comes uh, where the laces are and the, the tongue of the boot so the snow goes there and then starts to melt and melts straight into the boot so I bought these boot covers and in hindsight, really good idea, really good idea. I will never go skiing without those covers again. Another big thing that I needed was a sled bag to keep all of my things in the sled. So I just ended up sewing like a really random big rectangle with a zipper on top. And like I didn't make it 3D or anything. It was just like a plastic Ziploc bag uh, shape, but with uh, waterproof fabric and zipper on top. It worked fine. Uh, in hindsight uh, the seams weren't waterproof so if it was raining or the snow was melting the water came through but all in all like it was the cheapest option I could do at that moment. I also sold myself from a waterproof fa fabric boot covers so the idea was that if I'm in camp, I can wear those camp booties in the tent and if I need to quickly go out or some, do something so I don't have to put on my wet and cold and nasty ski boots. And they worked really well. I really like them. And uh, although I didn't have any pattern, yeah, I just sewed them like randomly just from top of my head. They <laughs> were really funny looking, but they worked really well and they were really cheap. Okay dog food. In order to keep the dogs happy, healthy and strong, because I was really counting on them to pull the, our big gear sled, I needed to have a really good, nutritious and also lightweight dog food. When we go dog sledding, 
we use uh, frozen uh, uh, dog meat, not, not dog meat, meat for the dogs. <laughs> And it's frozen, it's raw meat, but with this trip I couldn't have frozen food with me and I couldn't send, send frozen food in uh, supply boxes because they would melt. Fortunately, I found this company that does this rather new thing in the, like the, in the whole dog food uh, industry. Air dried, dried raw meat that I just needed to add water warm water on top let it soak a little bit and then voila there is this like a porridge of really nutritious raw meat food fortunately the company rocketto sponsored me with half of the food that i needed why half because at, at the beginning uh, this was the amount i thought i would need but what happened to the other half so i made a mistake in calculations how many calories my dog should eat and at first I just hugely underestimated the calories. I thought they would be doing, they would be okay with like 1,800 calories. I calculated that the dogs need um, approximately 4,000 calories per day per dog. So that's a lot of food. I also bought kibble that is really high on calories and fat, especially made for working dogs. I also bought these packets of uh, I think it's called lard in English. It's like pork fat, pure pork fat. And also then I ordered a second batch of Rocketto dog food so I would have the whole amount of calories needed. How did I discover I calculated the dog food calories wrong? Well, I took some kind of estimates online and I, and I just went with them. And fortunately, I had the brains to double check from uh, from the kennel where I worked from uh, from the specialists who have been working with sled, sled dogs their whole life. And then we came into conclusion that they definitely need more than I was planning for, and somewhere around 4,000 kilocalories instead of 2,000. But fortunately, I, ha I had enough time to order new food and you know make all of the rearrangements for these calories. Okay, and what about my food? Uh, I do not enjoy <laughs> planning human food, my food, for hikes, for any hike. I don't like it. I, I'm not good at it. I don't like to prepare my own packages. So fortunately, I had another, uh, this time Estonian company, a tactical food pack that sponsored me with 30 food packs. But I had 30 packs of these freeze-dried food um, packs so the rest I had to manage myself I started like doing food packs like porridges and some kind of uh, salty food I was really optimistical thinking like okay let's do these like uh, DIY food packs but uh, I, I no <laughs> they didn't taste good <laughs> In the final days I was so over with preparing the food so I just went to the store and bought some uh, more uh, freeze-dried food bags because like, I was at this point I was like I'm ready to pay for this kind of service and this kind of food so I don't have to manage it myself. It was a really good decision because these food bags were really good like the ones that I bought not the ones that I made myself. No. Because I was planning to send up resupply packages for the dog food, I thought I will just add my food there as well so I don't have to worry about like going to the small village shops and just buying whatever they have. So I bought all of the salty snacks and, I, uh, and the sun is really shining into my head. Wait, wait a second. Okay, now it's a little bit better. <laughs> So I bought all of the salty snacks and sweets as well, a lot of chocolate. I think I bought like five kilos of chocolate. <laughs> Fortunately, I found this like factory store, uh, another Estonian company that does uh, like really good chocolate, Kalev chocolate. So I bought this kind of factory default chocolates that they sell there that are cheaper than the, like the things that they mm, sell in stores. So I think I got a really good bargain there. A lot of different tastes. I wish I would have bought like more different tastes. And also, by the way, no dark chocolate in this kind of hike. I bought some, but I hated it. Milk chocolate all the way. Like none of this dark crap because I think I was just craving so much of this uh, sugar and sweetness. And the dark chocolate just was not doing it for me. I divided all of the food into five uh, stages uh, and I sent 
four resupply packages out uh, to the trail. There are maximum of four places that you can send packages to yourself on the trail and they used all four of them because the dog food was really heavy and I didn't want to carry more than I really needed to. Because all of my preparation uh, was a little bit chaotic maybe, uh, really fast, I didn't even have time to properly test my stove. Also we didn't have a lot of snow left in Estonia anyway. So up driving up to north of Sweden uh, I did uh, on the last night on the van I think I did a test run for the Trangia stove finally to see how much fuel it uses to melt the snow. I am two hours away from Kiruna which is my like last pit stop, last place to do my to send my resupply packages and buy some last gear and borrow the tent and the sleeping bag and I'm having a really emotional response to first of all the location it is it is reminding me a lot of the mountains that I, that I will go to and the weather and the proximity of the hike and I am scared <laughs> and excited at the same time The, the reality of the hike is setting in. Now I am transitioning to focusing only from planning into actually realizing I am, I am going. And it's terrifying and exciting. And yeah, <laughs> that, that's that. After driving up to Kiruna, I borrowed a tent, a proper winter expedition tent and a really warm uh, minus 30 degrees uh, Celsius sleeping bag uh, from Fjallraven. I'm really grateful for that because these gears, they are really, really high quality and really warm and really nice, especially in the mountains. And then I took Kitty and David and we started driving all the way back to Hemavan and they drove back with the van. So I didn't have to leave the van there. Uh, I could just start a hike and at the end of the van Kitty was uh, supposed to and did as well uh, pick me up in Abisko. Otherwise I would have to travel with buses and trains with a big sled and two dogs and I don't think I could have managed that. Anyway, this is the story of the preparation. Uh, the next videos will be all about the hike itself, like there are gonna be vlogs. I hope you're gonna enjoy them. And look at that, Linka came to see by as well. Hello, Linka, Linka. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and see you on the next vlog. Okay, bye.